Hello everyone, it's the Radical Readings here. This time, not with a gaming-themed creepypasta. I know that's a little bit of a, a break from what we usually do, but this one is much closer to reality, or uh, it, it is on, on a surface level, at least, when you, when you start looking at it. You'll see what I mean once we start reading, and we might as well start reading right now, so... Let's dive right into what happens to the McDonald's play places when they're demolished by XX Kitsuneko 2007 XX. Did you know that we've documented more of the surface of Mars than we have of McDonald's play places? It's true. Despite the fact that we've extensively mapped out the surface of a planet that takes months to even communicate with, all easily available to see in great detail online, you'd be hard-pressed to find anything remotely resembling a blueprint for a McDonald's play place, or at least one that's confirmed to be complete. Do as much research as you like. You'll only come across pictures from a bygone era, but nothing really concrete. The play place is no more than a mere fragmented memory now. Glimpses of thoughts and happy moments from when you were too little to care about the slickness of the plastic and the polyester cushioning, or the greasiness of the controllers on the game's kiosk in front of the towering structures of tubes and nets. The things kids have to play with in recent years are just downright disappointing. Sterile grays and whites with only minor hints of colors on bland plastic sheets covering the sides of what used to be grand towers. More daring attractions stripped away in favor of awkward blank space or extra tables. But for some reason, it just never sat too well with me. After all, I had grown fond, attached even, to those little fortresses of innocence even if I, myself, am now far too old to feasibly traverse past the glass door adorned with a mascot demanding one be of a certain height before entry. But even from a distance, behind that wall of solitude keeping me out of my home away from home, it was obvious, even from afar, things were oddly different. For one, Every McDonald's, every single one in our area, seemed to just close down for a couple of days. We are trying out a new look, the signs on the front said, but you can still come through our drive through to order. It never settled right with me. Me and my family spent an hour trying to find a location in which we could sit down and enjoy a delicious meal as a family but to no avail. Even once the dining areas opened back up, every play place, even those outside, were screened over, draped cloth or tall fencing, all bearing the same unsettling message. We're trying out a new look. A new look. Whatever this new look was, apparently required several months' worth of obscurity. And the result? The underwhelming, tasteless structures that remain there to this day. What exactly happened? Why did all the McDonald's play places get changed? What happened to the McDonald's play places when they were demolished? Well, I decided that I needed to get to the bottom of this mystery. I was determined to, even, to sate my unending curiosity. It was like they were beckoning, calling for me to come ever closer. But I knew that my answers wouldn't be found in any place I was allowed. And so I waited, staying up to the wee hours of the night. I had packed all the things I'd need to get my answers into my backpack before I left on the excursion. A flashlight, my iPad and portable charger to record evidence, some bandages, some food and water in case I got hungry, 
And as I was about to sneak off towards my window, something caught my eye. A glint in the blue light of my computer. My old softball bat. You never know. May need to defend myself or something, so I decide to pack it before slipping out onto the roof of my home. And just like that, I had been able to get out of the house and venture off toward the unknown. I lived near the edge of Trap Town Gibson, and thankfully there was a McDonald's close to my home, just on the edge of town. There, the buildings were scarce, and people were scarcer. Perfect for my break-in. As I walked low, tiptoeing through the ditch on the side of the road, a sense of adrenaline hit my heart before I had even set foot near the franchise. Am I really doing this? I thought to myself. My whole life, I never really managed to do anything too crazy. Maybe I just hadn't been on the planet long enough to amount to much, but I was really just your average run-of-the-mill girl. I'm not very popular, but I wasn't exactly unpopular either. I had friends, of, of course. By the time I was crawling through the vents, however, I had been so determined that I really couldn't let my inhibitions hold me back. I knew what I needed to do now. At least, I did, before my inner monologue was distracted by an unsettling sound of metal straining underneath me. I had stopped my movement, a worried expression twitching onto my nose. As with a loud clang, the vent had given way underneath me. I'm sent toppling down from the ceiling and into a dark room, hitting my ankle on something hard on the way down before falling face first into the floor. Thankfully, I had landed on my feet, though, even if I collapsed right after. As I come to my senses, I manage to rummage through my things and dig out my flashlight, turning it on and flicking it around to get a gauge of my surroundings. Motivational posters across a beige wall hung over small bookshelves that surrounded an oaken desk, now coated in dust from my descent from the vents above. Clearly, this was some sort of manager's office. Training my flashlight onto the desk's surface, I'd blow the veneer of soot off of it, revealing on the desk a post-it note on the desk. It was a little hard to make out with all the dust on the desk, but once I did, what I read was shocking. It was so nonchalant with what it had to say that it shook me to my core. Sinkhole is stable but northwest corner showing minor leakage. Patch up before kid falls in. Sinkhole? What sinkhole? Surely something like a sinkhole would have been on the news. Such an odd question. The desk yielded nothing of interest, just boring taxes and things of that nature. So I decided the best course of action would be to look into this myself. As I unlock two door, the lock was on the inside, of course. I exit the manager's office and sneak into the main room. Empty, thank goodness. I take every precaution to avoid the kitchen. Surely there's cameras up the wazoo in there to keep the workers in line, but no matter. Trekking onwards, I met face to face with the one and only Ronald. Only, he's holding his hand out. A printed sign indicating that I'm too tall to play the play place. But I know better than to take his lies at face value. Plus, I preferred it when the Hamburglar was on the door anyway, so fuck off. <laughs> I push the door open and start to look around, and God... It's even more depressing face to face. The dreary gray everywhere catches the light. Where was the sneaker keeper? The game kiosk? This play place was no play place of mine. Until 
I noticed something weird. A drooping bit of the carpet past the little net wall that keeps kids out. Off in the corner, sinking into the floor. Was this the lead? But if it was, how would I... Of course. My bat. Of course. Grabbing it from my backpack, I take the handle and push it past one of the loops of the netting before forcing it so that the width of the softball bat breaks the thread and makes a big enough hole that I can force it open. Diving in, I investigate the little dip. Huh. So... weird. Poking it with my bat was the only reasonable course of action, clearly. Suddenly, I could notice that if I poked it just a little harder, it fell rather easy to sink past the floor. But then I heard a sickening crack. I sunk an inch, the carpet sagging out of nowhere, before, suddenly, a hole opened out from under me. I flail about and lose my bat on the way down, becoming so disoriented that by the time I come to my senses, I've already been on the floor of my landing place for a good few minutes, ears still ringing. As I gained my senses, I felt like I was upside down. It was like that the whole time from here on out. Did the world flip, or did I? As I come to my senses, I feel a vaguely damp, pleathery cushion underneath me. The kind that sticks to your cheek if you press against it for too long. Pulling myself up, or down, who knows anymore, I'd scan my surroundings, but it was too dark to tell exactly what I was looking at. Thankfully, I felt my flashlight still hooked to the loop of the carabiner of the backpack. I unhook the carabiner and turn on my flashlight, which buzzes dubiously while I look around. And as I watch, I behold in horror, seeing towering above me the very thing I had been yearning and looking for this whole time. The old play place of legend. Only, it was taller than I remember. So much taller, in fact, that it stretched up as high as I could possibly see, my light failing to catch the top. A pit sank in my stomach as I realized this. It seems like I got what I asked for. The play place of my dreams. But a dream is only a hair's breadth away from a nightmare. And I'm afraid I may have finally breached that thin, thin line. But first, I became curious. There was an odd smell hitting my nose. So odd I couldn't begin to describe it. It was weird. At first, it seemed to be ever-present. But then, as I came to my senses proper, its direction became clear to me. I followed my nose as Toucan Sam says, leading me up a net ramp that slowly became a net bridge, and then a net ladder. What an odd scent, I thought. It feels so oddly fishy. As I mantled the ledge, I felt the scent get stronger as I'm presented a T-junction, all of which being horizontal plastic tubes that seemed to intersect around like a grid. Perhaps there was something on the other side, past this pipe maze. As I crawl in, I have to hold the flashlight in my mouth, but as I went in, I felt the stench just getting louder and louder, and then I hit a corner. I had nowhere else to go but left, and when I made the turn, my light laid on a sight that I'll never forget. Their faces, they looked so anguished, so pained, forever stuck in a look of horror. Bodies, 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 bodies. Some of them adults, some of them children. There were so many of them that I audibly gasped, only to choke on the stench of death. I try not to throw up. My cat ears twitch. 
this is a very, this is a very difficult for a sensitive tabaxi such as me. I have to immediately backpedal to avoid getting any dubious moisture on my fur after noticing the puddle in the middle of the pipe. And after that, I curled into a ball and wept for hours. Whatever was on the other side of those tunnels now felt a lot less appealing to look into. I decided to turn tail and retrace my steps, going back the other way. I wasn't sure if it were day or night, because I could hear the snicker... sneer king gring of sneakers on the very floor beneath me. The sounds of children playing merrily squeaking from the muffled padding I was standing on. They were truly up there, and I was down here? I felt so alone. I could hear people so close, but I couldn't find a way to breach. I tried banging and screaming and clawing to no avail. Thankfully, I can still reach Wi-Fi, so I'm writing this as, as I speak. <laughs> Although days have passed, and through all my wandering, I've started to grow so weary. At one point in the tunnels, it became clear I wasn't alone, and I've been hiding in the crawl space behind a rock wall for several days. I can hear clicking, and sometimes I can't tell if it's humanoid or not. Maybe it is a humanoid, just a human so far gone that they could never sound the same. I cry myself to sleep feeling myself starve to death. It's getting so numb. I can no longer hear the kids playing. It's getting hard to even type this message. But that clicking seems to have given way to the sounds of boots shuffling closer. The ripping of fabric. Some distant shouting. Am I truly saved? All right, everyone, that was... I mean, that was an experience, you know? <laughs> it, it started off... It started off okay, I will admit. It started off okay. The, the writing really... Really went downhill towards the end. I'm not sure why. It's like it just kind of... Collapsed in on itself. But, uh... Yeah, that's... That's the... That's... What happens to McDonald's play places once they're demolished, apparently, so... Think about that next time you go and order a Big Mac. Make sure to like the video and comment and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.